Hi, so this video is all about how to patent an idea. Maybe you've had a new idea for a new product, but you don't know where to start with protecting it. Maybe you want to know more about the patent process before you talk to a patent attorney because you don't want to look stupid. Or maybe you're just really worried that patents are going to cost you thousands of pounds and you can't afford that. Well, good news, patenting doesn't need to cost you loads of money. And if you keep watching to the end of the video, you'll learn how to keep your costs minimised and how you can afford to not only patent your idea, but how you can also afford to enforce that patent should anyone copy your idea as well. So keep watching. So this is what we're going to cover in this video. We're going to cover what is a patent? Is a patent right for you? Why should I patent? How does the patent process work? When should you patent the idea? And what are the costs? So that's what we're going to cover. I'm Phil Staunton. I'm Managing Director of D2M Innovation. And I've worked with hundreds of people over the last nearly 20 years on developing and protecting ideas. I've also got my own patent on a product, which I'm going to use as a case study in this video. So I know the process from both sides. And best of all, I'm not a patent attorney, which means I don't speak Latin. And hopefully I should be able to explain things in simple, uh, easy to understand ways. So what is a patent? Well, a patent is a way of protecting a new idea for doing something. It gives the inventor exclusive rights to use that new way of doing something, often for 20 years, if the inventor continues to pay the annual renewal fees on the patent. Now, it doesn't protect the look of something. So if you've got a new design of stool and it functions exactly the same way, but it just looks very different, then that is something you protect via registered design. Maybe you've got a brand and a tagline and a new logo, well that's something you protect with a trademark. Patents are reserved for functional ways of technically solving problems. And there are three things that that must be in order to get a patent. It must be useful and capable of being made or used. It must be inventive and non-obvious to someone skilled in that area. And finally, it must be unique. It can't have been done already. So they're the three key requirements to get a patent on your new idea. Now, in my experience working on patented products um, for a long time now, most patents are small incremental improvements on part of an existing product. I'm going to use my own product that I've got a patent on to explain that uh, and bring that to life. So this is a uh, pushchair carry cot, um, and I've got a patent on this particular carry cot. I haven't got a patent on the idea of a carry cot at all, because that's been done before, and I haven't got a patent on the way that the hood folds down, or the way that it collapses, or the way that it clicks into a pushchair, because all that's already known and has already been done. But what we did come up with is a new ventilation system with flaps both front and back. So then when you open those on a hot day and you push the push chair along, you get a through flow of air over the baby and you cool the baby down. Now that hasn't been done before and it is useful. Um, and therefore I was able to patent that system of opening flaps to allow that airflow through the carry cot. And that gives you a good example of what most patents are like. I'll tell you at the end of this video how you can actually stop copycat products without it costing the earth. And this is one of the great myths. People think I won't patent my product because it's going to cost me tens of thousands of pounds if I ever needed to enforce it. Well, that's not true and keep watching to find out why. So why patent an idea at all? Well, if you're going to develop and prototype and manufacture and launch your own product, it's going to cost you a lot in money, time and effort. And what you don't want is to launch that and then find that another big company who's already established in the market with a much larger marketing budget copies your idea and sells a lot more than you do just because they can get it out there faster. You'll also find that investors will often ask about patents and IP protection they're not about to invest a lot of their hard-earned money just to find another company rips off the idea after launch. So there's some good reasons there to get a patent. And copycat products happens a lot more often than you'd think. Let me give you an example of a product that we've designed. So this is the Riot Rucksack. We designed this back in 2012. 
uh, along with our client. And it's got zips here against the back, so that it's a lot harder for anyone to steal anything out of it, which is a great idea. But the problem was, six months after launch, we found products like this on the market. As you see, zips that mean that it's against your back. And this was one of several copycat products that came onto the market really soon after our client launched their Kickstarter campaign for their product. Now, maybe all those other companies didn't actually copy the product. Maybe they came up with the idea independently. But that's one of the points. If our client had patented that concept, it wouldn't have mattered if they'd come up with it independently or not. Anything that was done afterwards, she would have been able to stop because her patent would have given her the exclusive right to that idea. Now, in this case, that hasn't actually made a huge difference. So our client's done really well anyway, and she's selling loads of different rucksacks across her whole range. But that's one of the main lessons. You know, just because you've got a patent doesn't mean you're going to make loads of profit. But if you are making loads of profit and selling really well, and then it gets copied by other people, you'll lose some of that profit, and a patent can help stop that. At the end of the video, I'm going to go through a really low-cost way that you can use your patent protection to stop copycat products. I'll tell you at the end of this video how you can actually stop copycat products in the marketplace really cost-effectively. So keep watching to the end so that you can find out about that. So let's now look at how the patent process works. And basically we can see it here. So step one in terms of preparing your patent application, you're going to need to get your drawings together and the claims and the description and all the wording around your patent draft. And to get your patent, that needs to be enough information that someone who is skilled in that area can build your idea from the details in your patent application. Often, the best way of achieving that is to get a chartered patent attorney to do it for you. You can do it yourself, but only one in 20 people who does their own patent application ever gets through to grant. Those are the patent office's own numbers on that. So as you can see, it's quite complicated, it's not easy, and therefore often it is just worth paying a professional to do it for you. Once you've prepared your patent application, the next step is filing with the UK Intellectual Property Office. And that is the only place that you can file a patent in the UK. And again, if you've commissioned a chartered patent attorney, their fees will probably include them filing it, and that can be filed online, so that it gets done very quickly. The patent office will then do a patent search for you, and you'll need to review that search report and take a decision as to whether you're going to continue with your application or not, given the results that they've found. Now, some people would choose to do a commercial available patent search, or basically a paid search, before they ever file their patent. The reason being is then you can anticipate the results that are going to come back, and your patent attorney can use the results in that patent search in their drafting to try and avoid uh, infringing other people's patents and give you a better chance, therefore, getting through to grant quicker. Now, in about 12 months, you're going to have to consider whether you want to file what's called a PCT. Now, that is an international patent application. It's a holding application that basically will ensure that you can get a patent in something like 147 countries worldwide. So it's quite a good way to go. Most of our clients end up doing that application. But basically, you've got to decide that 12 months in, and that's part of the process. At 18 months, your patent will be published, and then fairly shortly after that, you'll need to request your substantive examination. And this really is where uh, a patent examiner at the patent office will examine your patent in some detail and start to say what you can and can't get through to grant. Now that process of them going through it all and you having to respond to that, your attorney having to respond to that, um, can take uh, up to, to two or three years um, as part of that process. Or it can be very smooth because actually what you're claiming is unique, um, it is different, it is non-obvious, um, and therefore it can go through quite quickly. And obviously if your attorney's involved in that process, then you actually are racking up costs quite rapidly during that process. And then finally, once you've persuaded the patent office examiner that you should get a patent, um, then 
it goes through to grant. Now, don't be put off by the fact that it can take up to four years, because while that process is going on, you can still legally use the phrase patent pending. And that means that you can use it on your packaging or on your product descriptions or even on the product itself as a deterrent to put people off copying. Because basically, if something's patent pending, if it then does go through to grant, you can claim damages from that person who's copied your idea. And that will put people off. The clients who really use that phrase, they get copied about 50% less than people who don't. You can imagine, can't you, if you're in the market um, of, of kind of getting products off the shelves, new products that have launched and are successful, sending them out to factories uh, in the Far East and asking them to copy it. Um, if you've got two products in front of you that you've found at a trade show and you're thinking about which one you're going to copy, the one that talks about patent pending all over it, you'll probably not copy. Um, but the one that says nothing at all about intellectual property rights, you might decide, well, actually, we'll give that a shot um, and we'll, we'll copy that. And there are, unfortunately, as I demonstrated earlier in this video, people who do do that and businesses who do, who look for other products that they can basically kind of rip off. There's a lot more detail in all of that, and I'll be launching more videos uh, later on, which will go into more of the detail of those different steps as part of the process. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit the bell icon, and then you'll get notified when I launch those next videos. Now, it's worth saying at this point that you can actually do a patent search yourself. You can use this website here, and I would suggest using the smart search option on that website. And that can give you an initial idea of um, what's already out there, what's already been protected before you pay for a professional search or before you go ahead with your patent application uh, and pay for the patent office to do their search. And this is often a quite a quick way of getting a general understanding uh, of whether your patent is likely to be something that can go through to grant for no cost at all. I'm going to be launching another video shortly on how to do your own patent search using this website and some other tools as well. So make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon, then you'll get notified as to when I launch that video. When you should patent your idea. And basically, I get lots of people coming to me who have already filed their, their patent and they basically say, look, isn't this great? I've got this, this patent application in. Well, it is great. Uh, and it does put a flag in the sand, which then basically means if anyone else comes up with that, that idea after that person's filed, uh, then the original person basically can, can own the IP around that idea. So it does put a flag in the sand, so to speak. But it also starts the clock running uh, on a grace period of, of 12 months before you need to decide about filing a PCT application that I mentioned earlier. Now they're around £4,000, so it's not a small amount of money. And my point to people always is, if you file your patent and you start that 12-month clock running and then you get involved in design and prototyping and finding a manufacturer, you're going to use up all of your grace period doing development rather than using your grace period to actually sell your product. And the other problem is, as you develop your product and your prototypes, you test it with the market and everything else, you might find your design changes or that you or your product designer comes up with some better ideas. And the problem then is you might have to file your patent again because you cannot add new subject matter to a patent application that's already been filed. And this really does need bearing in mind because you could end up, as I say, paying twice for your patent application, once at the beginning and then once when you've actually developed something that is in the end quite different. So, I always say, only file your patent application when you absolutely have to. So maybe you've developed your product, you've found a manufacturer, uh, and you're launching at a consumer show. Well, get the patent filed just before that big public launch. Now, there are some limitations to that, because during the product development process, obviously you're going to want to disclose the idea to your product designer, maybe to some people, some market research, maybe to investors. And if you've disclosed your idea, you then can't patent it. But you can disclose an idea using a confidentiality agreement or an NDA and still go on to patent that further down the line. And I'd say make the best use of that that you can so that you start your patent grace period um, as late as possible in your product development journey. Now this can be a little bit tricky and there may be times where you go, well actually I don't want to 
for example, send the designs to a manufacturer without a patent in place, and therefore you're going to file a patent before you do that. And that might well be a sensible way forward. And again, this is something that's probably worth discussing with your chartered patent attorney. But just bear in mind that risk that if you file early on, you're then going to get to a point of expensive patent decisions sooner. And really you want to get there having already started selling your idea and maybe already engaged with distributors in foreign countries, for example. So you've got some idea as to which countries you're actually going to be able to sell your idea in and therefore it is worth filing your patent in. So just consider all of that before actually going ahead uh, and commissioning your patent draft and filing. So how much do patents cost? The basic preparing your patent application and filing with the UK IPO is actually only £320 roughly of official fees. That's if you file online and if you request the search at the time that you file, which you don't actually have to do. But Drafting the patent application is often the expensive bit because that needs to be done by a professional. And the fees for a charter patent attorney to, to prepare your patent application can be anything from two and a half to six and a half thousand pounds, depending on the firm that you use, where they're based, and how complex your idea is. Now that will cover you then for the first 12 months. And then you need to think about PCT application, which as we've said earlier, can be around £4,000, but up to £6,000 if you're working with an expensive patent attorney firm based in London, for example. And then that's a holding application that will be in place for 18 months to two years. And that then, that is when patents get very expensive, because if you decide to further your patent application or prosecute your patent application, as it's called, into individual countries, you'll need a patent attorney in those countries. And if that's a foreign language, then you'll need translation um, done on your patent application as well. And that's where people can start to spend tens of thousands of pounds on their patent application. It's because they're filing in multiple countries in multiple languages. But if you just want to protect it in a single country, then it doesn't need to cost that much. And there are also some other cost-saving mechanisms that are worth talking about. If you want to minimise your costs with your chartered patent attorney, well, make sure you give them a really clear brief. Give them as much information distilled down as you can. A lot, often, a lot of the time, the cost comes because they're trying to get information out of you, or they're trying to understand all the detail about the product, and all that time basically is chargeable and costs money. The other thing is to make sure you patent your product once it's been developed and tested and there's no further changes. We have had clients previously who've insisted on patenting early on in the process, only to then develop the product further and have to file a new patent application on that new subject matter, because you cannot add it in to your previous patent application. And that all that does really is double their patenting costs. So the other thing I'd say, as I talked about earlier, is you know, look at your timeline of costs and push them as far down that timeline as you can. So file the patent as late as you possibly can and maximise your grace period to actually start to sell your products and get some revenue into your business. Finally, I said that I would share a technique for how you can defend and enforce your patent application without it breaking the bank. Well, often retailers will not want the bad press of knowing that they are selling a product that is actually infringing someone else's patent. And we've seen clients of ours many a time go to high street retailers or online retailers like Amazon and basically say, look, you know, you're listing a product here that infringes my patent. And often, really quickly, that retailer will just delist the product and stop stocking it and selling it straight away. And that can cost you no money at all. Be a very effective um, defense to stop copycat products. Also, what you can do is get your patent attorney to send a standard cease and desist letter, it shouldn't cost you any more than £100, it's just a template letter they use all the time, and send that to the person who's importing your product uh, or making your product um, and basically say, look, you know, you're infringing my patent application, here are the details and the numbers, unless you stop, then we're going to take further action. And again, in, in our experience, what we find is that 50% of the time, the person doesn't want the hassle and will stop copying the product straight away. And again, you know, it hasn't cost you very much money, 
that has used your patent and stopped a copycat product that otherwise will be stealing your market share and some of your potential profit. So hopefully you found that video useful. If you have, please do comment below. If there's other videos you want me to create, then please add, add that into the comments as well. Do check out the description because there's more links in the description to further information that you might find useful. And make sure you watch this video right now because that goes through the other forms of intellectual property protection like registered designs, design patents and trademarks that you can also use to protect your idea, potentially much more cost effectively than with a patent.